Now before we get started I just want to give a big thanks to Jason who sent me this filter. Thank you very much Jason because without you guys out there sending me these filters to upgrade I wouldn't be able to extend this series as far as it's gone. It's got to be into the 70s or 80s now. <laughs> so thank you Jason. Welcome back to another edition of Pimp My Filter. I'm not sure which number this is. It's got to be probably as high up into the 80s. We've done a nation of these videos. But in this video, we're going to be taking a look at another filter from Maidenhead Aquatics in the UK. And this is the EFX 400. A long, long time ago, we took a look at this fella's bigger brother, which was the EFX 600. And that one held a nation of media. It was a real beast. I think it shifted about 2,000, maybe it's 2,300 litres per hour. It was a real powerhouse. Eight kilos of media in it, um, but you just can't get them anymore. You know, they're really difficult to get a hold of. The 400, the 300 and the 200 are easily available. And I'm not sure why, because that big lad should be available as well. Check out the links in the video description. I'll put everything I'm talking about in there. So, the EFX400, according to the manufacturer, is suitable for tanks up to 400 litres or 105 US gallons. It moves 1,400 litres per hour and that is approximately 368 US gallons per hour. And the pump only consumes 22 watts of electric. So it's pretty efficient. And judging by the size of the thing, I fully expect to get the best part of four kilos of media into here, but we shall see. Let's bring the camera in and see what comes with it because this one hasn't even been opened. It's never been looked at and it is as it comes from the manufacturer. So we've got the normal sort of setup on the top here. We've got four release clasps. One, two, three, four. That enables us to get the head off. We've got a priming button here. Which seems pretty effective. You can actually hear the air rushing in and out of these valves. Um, we've got an innie and we've got an outie. And then in here, we've got the place where the pump sucks the water from. And we've got the place where the water comes in from your tank and goes down here into the bottom of the filter and then rises up. We've got a grill on the top, which stops any filter media getting sucked into the intake of the pump. And then we've got one, two, three trays in here. Whoa, man. Dear me. And I don't know whether you can see there, but in the bottom of there, we've got probably the best part of two inches of wasted space in the bottom of here. So there's like a two inch cavity below the bottom tray. That is definitely going to be filled with ceramic rings if I can find any, I may have some lying around. And what that'll do, it'll help to settle out the heavy muck when it comes in from the tank. So we'll put that out the way. All right, and then we'll go bottom to top. I'll show you what comes with it. So, in the bottom tray, we've got a very, very coarse blue pad, followed by some carbon. Yep, it's already looking strange. And then we've got some really good catapult ammo in the form of some sintered glass media balls. They look very, very dense. I'm not quite sure how effective they'll be, but they would make really good catapult ammo. And then in the top tray, we have uh, kind of like a, a coarse to medium density pad a phosphate pad, and then a fine pad. So anybody who knows anything about filtration will know that that is completely arse end round. I'll show you how you, ideally this should be set up if you don't want to upgrade it in any way and you just want to operate it with what comes from the manufacturer. Right, so in the bottom tray, you'd keep 
the very coarse blue pad followed by the medium pad from the top tray that would go in followed by the fine pad if I can work out which way that goes around that's it yes good and that fits into there very very well so in your bottom tray that's coarse medium and fine that's all your mechanical filtration done in the bottom of the filter where you want all the crap to sit I feel like a right clown pointing this out but it's it's so obvious you know I mean if your filter works bottom to top you would have all your filtration or your mechanical filtration done in the bottom of it so middle tray that's where you would use your filter media or your catapult ammo obviously you would take it out of the bag first and then in the top tray you would have your chemical media so you'd go with that huge bag of carbon in there followed by your phosphate pad and that would enable the filter to work mechanically biologically and chemically so ideally that's how it should be set up with the gear that's in the filter from the manufacturer it doesn't take much swapping around and it's pretty obvious which way it should go but if you wanted to upgrade it and make it more effective I shall show you what to do so really you would keep that bottom tray how we showed it set up before coarse medium fine that's perfect everything comes with the filter so you don't need to buy anything extra for that next two trays would ideally be biological media in this case we're going to use bio, bio home ultimate but if you wanted to use carbon or the phosphate pad you could add that as well let's see how much these fit in all right now these trays are pretty deep and they fit together really well even when you just drop them on top of each other it's a bit of a task to get them apart look at the size of that that's a pretty substantial tray and you can easily get two kilos of media into each tray and that is the biohome ultimate media obviously just use whatever media you want i'm using this because we're trying to create a full cycle and we want something that'll support aerobic and anaerobic bacteria two kilos of media in each tray is 4.4 pounds so in total we've got four kilos or 8.8 .8 pounds of media in there to be honest if you're buying it in the US you could probably get nine pounds in there you know I haven't shaken it down I haven't really packed it in it easily gets two kilos in each tray therefore a fully upgraded filter would be bottom tray coarse medium and fine foams followed by four kilos of filter media perfect but if you wanted to use carbon you know say you had any color from bogwood or peat or you know any sort of chemicals you wanted to draw in you could use carbon that is a particularly big lump of carbon uh, you'd obviously have to take a little bit of media out to use that the phosphate pad you may get that in in fact yeah I think you would get that in whilst still retaining the four kilos of media <laughs> my camera nearly went foobar there <laughs> so with a bit of beat down you probably could still get four kilos of media in here and the phosphate pad or indeed a thin carbon pad but we're going to go without that because with regard to chemical media you know the, the carbon pad or carbon itself activated charcoal phosphate pad purigen all that sort of stuff you don't need it unless you need it and it might sound a little bit strange to say that you don't need 
chemical filtration unless you actually need it. But the reason the likes of charcoal or carbon like that, I mean, that's a huge bag. The reason that comes with most filters is because most filters are set up to be really inefficient and they help to draw in, the carbon helps to draw in smells which makes it appear as if the filters work and properly. It helps to keep the water clear. Uh, it doesn't necessarily make the water healthier. That is what makes the water healthier. That is what will support a nation of bacteria. And it's the bacteria that will consume the ammonia, nitrite and nitrate. Better. Okay, so as far as setting this particular filter up goes, remember we've got that massive space in the bottom. So ideally we want to more or less fill that up to where these little fins are with ceramic rings and in this case I'm just going to use whatever I've got lying around. We've got some pretty good quality sintered glass rings. I think these are actually Aqua One sintered glass rings. So we'll stick those in. Got some other ones there which are almost like sipper racks there, even better quality. And then we've got some Eheim Mech. That's a really good one, it's very heavy, very small. Chip that in there. You can see it all mixes in beautifully there, and when the water comes in from our tank, It'll swill around in the bottom of here. This will settle out a nation of crap before it travels up through the foams and into your filter media. So it'll really help to keep the filter clean and extend the intervals between you cleaning the filter out. You know, this could take it from you needing to crack this open once a month to needing to crack it open once every three or four months, which is a big difference. Yeah, we've got some more Eheim Mech there. Beautiful. That's a nation of stuff in there. And as you can see, it's all rings. So when the water comes down, it travels all sorts of different directions. Heavy muck gets settled out in the bottom of there. That is really important if you've got a lot of wasted space in the bottom of your bottom to top operating filter. So that's our primary settlement media in there. Next we've got the coarse, medium and fine foams, followed by two trays of filter media. One. Two. And then that's followed by the mesh plate that goes on the top, just sits on top of the tray, followed by the head of the pump slash filter. One, two, three, four, fully pimped up. This filter will easily hold four kilos of media, making it suitable for a normally stocked tank up to 400 litres or 105 US gallons. And if you've got a heavily stocked tank, it would be suitable for roughly half that. So around about 200 litres or 52 US gallons. And obviously when I'm given these figures for, for these filters in this series of videos, I'm working on a full cycle. The processing of ammonia, nitrite and nitrate. That needs a suitable amount of good quality media capable of supporting aerobic and anaerobic bacteria. And I've just noticed there's a lot of black stuff come off that carbon. Just as well I haven't touched my face otherwise I'd be in blackface I'd be getting accused of cultural appropriation. 
and then I'd probably get cancelled and my YouTube channel would get deleted in this day of understanding and equality. Okay, so overall, this is quite a sleek design. You know, it's a, it's, it's nothing flashy. It's got no Wi-Fi or any of that crap. It's just a very functional filter and it is quite efficient as well. 22 watts, that's not gonna cost you much to run. Holds quite a lot of media for the size of it. That little bit of wasted space at the bottom can be filled with rings to make it useful. So that is actually a bonus. <laughs> as much as many people would think that was detracting from the capacity of the filter, it actually improves the capacity of the filter because all the heavy crap is really gonna settle out in that bottom third now. Um, yeah, it's just a good filter. Comes with all the necessary spray bars and intakes and outtakes, all the pipes and everything. And for the price of it, I would say it was a very good filter. The one that would be nearest to this one, in fact, almost identical, especially as far as how much media it holds, would be the All Pond Solutions, no, not All Pond Solutions, Aqua One Aquis 1250. That one I don't think is quite as high, might be a little bit wider. And that one, again, easily held four kilos of media. I think it's more or less the same sort of price. So you've got two filters to consider there if you're after a filter that'll hold roughly four kilos. I'll put links to everything in the video description. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video where we will be taking a look at God knows what. See you next time.